Hey, hi and welcome to the third part of day three. In this particular video, we're gonna unlock another new form. So let's talk about the forms that we have already learned. So the first form we have already learned about the index and keeping the choices on that and then keeping some aggregate and in the index till n, find out with the previous information x, find out the answer y, whatever is asked in the problem or whatever y could be potentially. Uh, in form two, we said that, okay, we're gonna find out best ending at y, best y ending at the index, whatever we are at currently. In the third form, we talked about there is a multiple sequences and we are like dealing with some matching kind of problem where we have to match them or change things here and there and do certain things. And then in that case, dp of i comma j comma some x, x is some previous aggregate across the two strings and uh, i and j is going to be the starting points of the two strings that is left. And in those two strings, find out the best y for those two strings, right? From i to n and j to m. That's what is generally kind of used in such problems. Next, let's unlock one more form. And the next form that we're going to unlock is through this famous, famous problem, rod cutting problem. And this form is actually what I call as LRDP. Okay. So, uh, the problem goes this way that there is this rod, which like is of length X N and there are like some weak points in the rod at X one, X two, so on up till X N minus one. Uh, and these values are given to you. Now let's say if you can break the rod or cut the rod at a particular place where there is a weak point. Okay. And when you break at that point in time, the rod length where you're making the break is going to be get added to the cost of your breaking. Okay. Your cost of breaking a rod is equal to its length. Okay. So now what we need to do is we, we need to break it into N minus one different cuts. I mean, uh, we have to break it down into N pieces altogether. The first piece, second piece, we have to break at all weak points, but we have to do it in minimal total cost possible. In fact, what you can see over here is that if you cut over here first, number one, and then number two over here, the first cut is going to have full length 10 available already. So 10 cost will be added. And then if you cut at three for this cut, the length of the rod is not 10, but eight, right? Because we have already made the cut at two. So now you have this much and a rod of this much length. And now you're making a cut over here. So when you're making the cut, the length of the rod on which you're making the cut is going to be your cost. So you get a 10 plus eight. Whereas if you, I would have done it in a bit different way, if I cut it over here first, I'm going to get a 10 because the rod length right now is 10 and I'm going to get this piece where it's like zero two, three, and then from three till like it, it, it got splitted over here and then it's over here. Then if I make a cut over here, it's going to cost me the length three because this rod has a length three, which is equal to 13. So depending upon the order in which you cut the rods, the cost might differ. Okay. In terms of the order in which you cut the rods, uh, cut the points, the, the cost will differ and we want to find the minimum total cost that we can do. That's the main problem. Okay. So how do we model about these kind of problems? That's what we want to learn. And this is what the last, uh, the fourth form is all about. So the fourth form deals with such kind of sub area problems where we have to cut it into this one. So think about it this way. When you cut over here, you're going to get this, this as a separate piece, this as a separate piece, and they are two independent problems. You have to optimize them independently. Then let's say you make a cut over here. So you might need to like optimize this much, this much and this much. So what you're getting is at any point in time, even after making the cuts, you always have a sub array, sub rod or a sub uh, array of the original problem as a new problem, right? So what this does is it converts the problem of a sub array or a sub range, like let's say from L to R that there is a range in the, in the rod, the original rod could have been longer, right? But think about the points L and R, the Lth point and the Rth point. What if only if this much of the problem is available, what is the best way to cut this? Like in this case, what is L, R and some aggregate in this problem, we don't need any aggregate because there is no dependency on previous or next elements. But if only the points be between L to R is right now in front of you, what is the most optimal way in which you can break the rods is what is generally returned. So best way. Uh, we're going to return best way to cut XL till XR, let's say, okay, is what we're going to find out. What is the minimum cost? When I say best, it, that essentially means what is the minimum cost, right? In what minimum cost can you do this thing? So in what minimum cost can you cut the rod from XL till XR point? Because in this case, in what minimum cost? So this is x1, x2, x3, x1, x2, x3. 
So we can cut from x1 till x3 and then inside that we can try and cutting it at x2. So these kind of things will happen in, 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 the, in the original scenario. But if from xl to xr or a part of the subarray is available, a part of the rod is available, what is the minimum cost in which you can break it into its smallest pieces? Okay, that's what we are kind of dealing with. So that's the substrate that we read in this reach. Uh, we keep in these kind of problems so L and R, which is the sub interval. Okay, this is also called as interval DP in, at many places. If you read this term interval DP, this is also called as interval DP at places. But I generally call this LRDP because I keep L and R and it's form four essentially that we're going to be using in most of our terminology next times. Okay, so best way to cut X L to XR is what we're going to be doing with this one. And what about the transitions, right? So you have LR and you have, let's say some X equal, L equal to two and some, some place over here, let's say R equal to N minus one, right? So that's the standard like setup that we keep over here. If we talk about the transitions, how can we find out the best way to cut this much of the rod? Okay. How much we can, how we can find that out? The way to do that would be, okay, the way to do that would be, so you need to make the first cut, right? Like, so you have a rod. First you will break it, right? First you will break it and then you will have two pieces, right? So where do you make the first cut? That matters. So let's say you make the cut at some X, uh, X, P, okay? At X, P, you make the first cut between L and R. This has to be obviously between L and R to make the answer for L and R. So for L and R, you need to find out which point can you cut for the first time so that it's very, very optimal, okay? Okay, so if you make the cut at X, P, now the total cost that you're going to get is obviously going to be X R minus X L, isn't it? Because the rod length is nothing but X R minus X L, X two in this case, right? So this is going to be the cost of rod irrespective of where you cut it in this problem. It can depend upon the rod. It can depend upon the midpoint also, like some function of the rod is going to be there in any general problem. But in this case, it's going to be the rod length. Plus if you break it over here, you're going to get now two different pieces. One is from this much to this much, like you will get this rod as a separate rod and this rod as a separate rod, right? Now you need to break these smaller rods into its big, in, in its basic form. If you recognize this is actually the same kind of problem that we have defined right now, and we can actually use for this much, we can find out the best way to cut it into smallest pieces using DP of L to P. What does DP of L to P means? If you would had rod from L, to XL to XP, what is the minimum cost in, in which you can break it to the molecular pieces or the basic pieces? Isn't that the problem right now? So the best that you can do will be returned by this DP. That's the premise. That's the definition, right? That DP returns correctly. Can we merge them to get a bigger value? That's how recursion works in terms of that. Plus, if you had to break this rod over here, we're going to return DP of from P till R. What is the best way to cut this particular rod into smallest pieces? And this is going to return me the total cost. If you cut it over here, the current cut cost plus how to break the rest of the pieces into smallest pieces. That's the total cost, right? And whichever P, okay. So over here, R and L2 is fixed, right? It's, it's the parameters of the recursion. This P ca can be variable. I can make the first cut over here. I can make the first cut over here. I can make the first cut over here and so on. So we will loop over all the P's. So we need to minimize this for all P's in the range L to R, not inclusive of L to R, obviously. For all different P's in the range L to R, we want to minimize the cost of breaking the thing. So whatever best P we find such that this cost is minimum, that P is going to define the best cost to break the L to R. That's how we're going to find it out. Okay. So that's how this particular like kind of structuring up looks like. Okay. Okay. So now let's do the step, step three for this, which is going to be the time complexity check. I mean, step three over here is actually the fourth step of the formulation. We know the form. So it's like, it's step zero. Uh, we did the previous step as the formulation. This is the step one where we did the formulation part of the things. And then we write, wrote the transitions over here. That's the step two. Then at step three, we do the like TL check, time limit check. So we have written DP of L to R. Uh, I should write it over here. Is going to be equal to for P in the range L to R min across all such P's X of R minus X of L. That's the cost plus dp of l to p plus dp of p to r okay that's what is there okay so now let's talk about the time complexity over here number of states okay l can take 
and n different values okay n different values r can take potentially n different values like the points that are given so number of states would be n into n which is equal to n square that is true okay number of transitions number of transitions can be like it's actually to the loop over p is what we are kind of thinking about as transitions so we can break at any points as the choice so if you think about the total transitions it is put, it is at max o of n right it can be at max n so that's the main transitions number of transitions worst case number of transitions that can be there and if you put that in the formula we have n square into 1 plus n in order notation obviously which is going to be equal to order n cube okay so the time density of this particular thing would be order n cube let's code this one okay let's code this one so this is n cube and that's i think what we can do in case you already know how to code this particular type of problems you can maybe think about this particular challenge problem that can solve it better than n cube this is actually pretty hard but if you can think about it maybe we can maybe discuss it some in some doubt session or in some class in future right but let's code this one first okay so this is the problem that we had written for the last like lcs problem we're going to take up the this problem now so let's say we are given integer n and the first point is zero and then so integer x of let's say some some numbers are there okay this is an array that is given to us so for so we are given the values of x1 x2 x3 up till xn so for uh scene n for integer one equal to zero one is less than equal to n one plus plus and uh, scene x of i uh, scene x of i that, that's there okay now uh, the first point was it absolute zero then the x1 x2 x3 up till xn was there in the diagram if you see that over here zero then x1 x2 x3 so we can call this as x0 right let's say let's say we use this 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 thing always let's say let's say we use this thing always okay so if you go so if you go to this particular place you will see that this particular thing is from 1 till n and this is 0. So let's call this x0 as this, okay? So we're going to use that in the code just to make the implementation way easier. Uh, x0 is equal to 0. And then we need to solve the problem from 0 to n inclusive, right? Both the sides. So I'm now going to write the recursive function integer recurrence, integer l, integer r, okay? Uh, now, if, so now we're going to write, so this is the minimum cost to break the, uh, rod from L to R and uh, we're going to write the pruning. Do we need a pruning? Uh, maybe if L is greater than R, maybe that can be a pruning. I don't think that is ever going to happen. So I don't need pruning in this one. Base case, even right. So base case would be like if L is equal to equal to R, no, if L plus one is equal to equal to R. So this cut to the next cut, it's like a single rod. You cannot break that in between, right? So if it's of single unit, what we can say is that fine, uh, go ahead and return zero because it's a small, just a single unit, right? We cannot break it. So there is going to be no cost. So we return zero. Okay. That's the base case. Uh, compute integer answer. The best cost we can do is maybe we need to we need to minimize cost. So let's say we put plus infinity as a default value for integer p, which is the breakpoint, is going to be in the range l plus one. P is less than or equal to r minus one. Note that or uh, we are not including l and r because you cannot break at the exact endpoint, right? There is no rod to break on the other side, so uh, that is not possible. And if this is there, then we do p plus plus. And finally, we have this is the breakpoint that we are trying to loop on. For this breakpoint, answer equal to min of answer, comma. If you break over here, the cost is x of l, x of r, minus x of l, plus recurrence of, plus recurrence of l to p. So you break that rod now plus recurrence of you break the rod from p to r okay and across all the minimums whatever is the best you return that particular thing so that's the whole recurrence and we just simply make it a dp now so dp of 101 101 I'm just uh, so anyways thousand is not possible uh, not 
like a valid input because it would be n cube but still let's let's just keep it that way uh cash check if dp of l to r is not equal to minus one then we return what we're gonna return we're gonna return dp of l to r and before you save the return the answer just save it in the dp value that's all that's all you need to do right and anyway since the lengths are always positive i'm assuming that we can never get a negative value so we're gonna initialize the dp mem set dp with minus one size of db and then we're gonna we're gonna see out recurrence of you have this rod starting from x0 till xn break it into the smallest pieces that you can and that's actually the main problem and this is going to be the full code for this one right so that's that's almost all for this particular problem guys that would be all for this form in fact as well we're gonna see more problems soon enough on this form because this is a really good form to practice and a lot of questions get created on around this one uh so I think this is almost all there is to this particular video. I think we have understood the LRDP as well that you have to kind of deal with intervals in these kind of problems. Obviously, like things are going to get more and more clear as you solve more and more problems. But yeah, this is almost the form four. In the next video, we're going to unlock the last form, the fifth form, and we're going to then close off for today. Right. And I'm going to give you some problems to practice as well. Okay. So do hit the like button if you like this particular video and let me know in the comments that which of these forms till now is your favorite as of now. Okay. That's all. Let's see what's the form five. See you there.